he supposed that it was not quite the right time to reveal that he had been cooped up in the bathroom with diarrhea. Oh, <laughs> my guy. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I feel you, bro. I feel you. That's that's rough. Just now, it felt like someone was watching me. Oh, frick, she feels it too. She's got the whole eyes thing too. What does it mean? How are you not there? Who are you? How's it going, everybody? Hoodlamut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we had to take a medical exam uh, for uh, Hazuki, uh, who is the nurse in the hospital that we went to. Uh, we weren't able to ask Dr. Takashina our question, uh, and... At least for me, I'm a little skeptical as to uh, who Hazuki actually is, uh, seeing as uh, Takami said that he didn't remember having to do any medical exams of that nature before. Uh, so that was interesting. I have a feeling that there's more to it than just uh, being an exam. Uh, after that, we went to the container again. And while we were playing ESO, we got, in a way, uh, in a roundabout way, we got called out by Grimm uh, that uh, basically everybody knows about the new gen stuff and you're the only one that doesn't. And so because uh, Nidhart is the leader of uh, their particular guild, Takami felt that he needed to be in the know about all the new gen stuff. So he started looking up pictures. It started making him ill. But then he got strength from his delusions of Seiratan. And uh, she helped us to be able to just click the pages and just try to just get it into our brains that we have it. Uh, and now we're here. And that was kind of where we left off. So uh, let's uh, just get into this, shall we? It was the first time in three days that Banya Suji had set foot in the Shibuya Police Station conference room. Oh! Okay, we're actually getting, like, a, 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 a perspective from the police. Okay, that's kind of cool. The investigation meeting for the Maru Yamacho crucifixion homicide case had already begun, and Bon was greeted with universal gazes of displeasure for his tardiness. Bon forced a polite smile before bending down to sit. He supposed that it was not quite the right time to reveal that he had been cooped up in the bathroom with diarrhea. Oh, <laughs> my guy. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I feel you, bro. I feel you. That's that's rough. That's rough. Dude, what if I just started thinking? So just thinking of prior episodes, do you think Bon, without seeing his face yet, do you think Bon is that guy that we saw that we thought was a teacher but that seemed a little too young to be a teacher. What do you think? Huh? I want to see if I'm right here. Let's see. The Mato Yumacho crucifixion homicide case had been assigned to the Shibuya police station on the morning after the incident. As they were lacking in manpower due to the Cornelius Tower mass suicide case and the Shibuya station undergrad and fetus homicide case, even the third-rate assistant inspector... Bon, whom the Metropolitan Police Department Investigation Division were practically begging to retire, had been called in by the main office. Moreover, as all the incidents had occurred within the Shibuya Police Station's jurisdiction, it was an unusual situation in which a single jurisdictional station was utilizing three special investigation teams. Wait, so they were saying they wanted... Like, everyone was wanting Bond to retire, right? That means he must be older, so it can't be that one that we saw. So that had to be somebody else, if I understood that right. Because of this, operations were made quite difficult, with the three investigation teams having access to only one large conference room that they had to alternate between. The mass media was hailing it all as one large case known as New Gen. And 
there were rumors that the police would combine the three investigation teams in order to make a new gen investigation division, thus solving the issue of manpower. All the detectives found this prospect completely asinine, regarding it as nothing more than an absolute joke. Assistant Inspector, your report. Bond's superior, Inspector Matsunaga, who was in charge of the investigation team, called out to Bond with a piercing gaze. But Bond did not notice this. He simply continued to cool himself down with a handheld fan as he took a moment to recuperate. Assistant Inspector. Assistant Inspector Bon. Are you listening to me? Oh, nope, it is a kid. That does, that looks like him. Doesn't that look like the guy that was watching us? A little different. No, he had a different jawline, didn't he? He had more of like a square jawline. Maybe it's not the same one. Shoot, but he's got like similar eyes. So I was, okay. All right. I don't know. Okay, I don't think this is the same kid. So, okay. But it is a young person, so. Oh, no, 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 wait. This is someone else talking. I didn't even realize. The boss, the boss is calling you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind, never mind. No, 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 no. It's still there. It's still there. Never mind, never mind. The boss is calling you. Bonsan. He's waiting for your report. Hello? The whispers of Bond's partner, a rookie named Suwa, finally got him to realize he was being called. Oh, yeah, that's not the same person. Okay. Nope, that's someone completely different. Okay. Uh, interesting. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Suwan will give the report. Y you want me to do it? I did tell you to if I wasn't here, so them's the breaks. <laughs> Hurry it up. Suwa sighed as his superior jabbed him in the elbow, then stood up straight and tall. The analysis of the security camera footage from near the crime scene has finally finished up. Uh, concluded. The recording shows a suspicious individual present at the scene at around the time the crime was likely committed. Murmurs echoed throughout the conference room. The relaxed atmosphere from before had been turned on its head. The other detectives began to take frantic notes in order to not miss a single word of Sua's report. Considering the situation, it was no surprise they were so frantic about it. After all, Three horrific cases had occurred within their jurisdiction in the span of a single month, only one of which was not ruled as a homicide as of yet. Their strong determination to find the culprit even in the face of their reputations was only natural. I will show the footage on the projector. Okay, this is interesting. As per the instructions Bond had given him in advance, Suwa had the projector display the footage on the projector's screen. The projector shown an image of the confined, filthy back alley of Maru Yamacho. It was night, and there were very few streetlights present, so virtually nothing was visible. This is a security camera from a coin-operated parking lot, located about 50 meters from the scene of the crime. The parking lot was only big enough to fit two vehicles. It was a tiny plot of land interposed between two buildings, and it was constructed without any real care as well. The scene of the crime was not visible in the footage. Not even the path leading to it could be seen. All it displayed was the road that was one farther away from the crime scene. The video had no sound. The time the video had been recorded was graciously displayed on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, 9.34 p.m. According to the testimony of residents near the crime scene, the sound of nails being hammered could be heard beginning from just past 9 p.m. and ending at around 9.30 p.m., which I imagine you already know. This footage is from 9.34 p.m., which means it was recorded right after the time of the crime. The suspicious individual 
is shown for around six seconds starting from 9.34.53. During that time, they run from the back of the road in front of the parking lot to the front. Oh, yeah, there he is. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, this is going to get people on his tail, so this must be why he's thinking he's seeing people, and he's like, oh, that must just be a teacher, but they must actually have people investigating him. Oh, no. Immediately following Suwa's explanation, a silhouette appeared on the footage. They seemed to be in a great hurry and ran from the back of the screen to the front. As the resolution was quite poor, not even their gender could be ascertained at a glance. But Bon had already gotten the crime laboratory to analyze that very point. The results of the forensic analysis show that the individual is a man, with an age estimated between late teens and early 20s. Uh, uh, and early 20s. It was impossible to discern their facial features. Their clothing, however, is fairly distinct, and it was discovered to be the male uniform of Suimei Private Academy, located in Shoto. Also, if you would direct your attention toward the right hand. The image enlarged on the right hand of the suspicious individual. It appeared to be grasping something. Oh no, the stake. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. Upon playing the footage back in slow motion, we discovered that when he waves his arms while running, the light reflects from the object he's holding thanks to the lighting present in the parking lot. Now at the good part, Bon took over Suwa's explanation. Judging by the shape, there's a possibility that it's the same kind of cross-shaped stake used in the crime. The detectives continued to murmur noisily. The crucifixion culprit may be a high schooler. The proposition was fairly shocking to them. After all, it meant that the new generation madness moniker that the mass media had been pushing could actually become a reality. So, the closest person we have to a suspect would be this boy, correct? That would be the case, indeed. Bond stroked the stubble on his jaw. It was a habit of his. Whenever he felt one step closer to cornering a culprit, he would always reach for that satisfying scraping sensation. That is all. Suwa took a deep breath and sat down. You're the worst, sir. I can't believe you robbed me of the best part like that. Ignoring Suwa's grumbling, Bon once again burned the image of the high school boy into his mind. So, you've finally shown yourself. Now I've just got to grab onto you and never let go. Interesting. Okay, we got we got investigators, bro. It does. It's got like it's definitely got like some uh, Death Note connotations to it, you know. It's got that same type of uh, atmosphere to it. <laughs> oh yeah, here's the image he's about ready to look at. Sure enough, the image Shogun had sent was in my cache folder. 168491JPEG was its name. Obviously, a part of me was still hesitant to even look at it. I mean, it was a pretty freaky nasty image. Grotesque as all heck, too. I was sure just looking at it would throw me right back to the scene of the crucifixion, where that violent scene had taken place right in front of me. But even then... I needed to expose Yua's flawed logic, and therefore guarantee my own safety and innocence. Thankfully, since Seratan was there for me, I could handle a little bit of gore. Mustering all the courage I had, I double-clicked the file. Ugh. Gosh. It was so gory. 
but compared to the crucifixion scene I'd seen in person, it wasn't quite as bad. Telling myself that the image had to be a fake, I was just barely able to stomach it. When I'd first received the image, I'd closed it immediately after looking at it once. I hadn't inspected it thoroughly. This time, holding back the urge to vomit, I decided to examine the image in excruciating detail. I didn't know much about how to tell whether a picture was fake or not, but taking a look at the shadows, seeing if there was anything off about the surrounding area, and other stuff like that should probably be enough. The only possibility I had in mind was that the photo had been taken in advance, and the crucifixion corpse had then been put on top of it using CGI. And then, the day after Shogun had sent the picture to me, they'd executed the crime exactly as they'd edited in the image. Thanks to the poor resolution and how dark the image was, I could only really see the stakes, leaving the identity of the victim unclear. Light was only hitting the area surrounding the corpse, yet something about the image was just begging for me to look at the crucifixion itself. I felt like that was the intent of the person who'd made it. I mean, come on. Focusing that much light around the corpse was kinda overkill, don't you think? <laughs> well, it wasn't like I'd been paying close attention to the actual crime scene, so I couldn't really jump to conclusions. In the picture, the demon girl wasn't standing in front of the crucified corpse. But when I opened my eyes wide and looked even closer... I noticed a silhouette in a dark spot on the left side of the image. Oh! Oh, sure, yeah! I never noticed that before. What the heck? Uh, yeah, what is that? Can't even tell what that is. I'd almost completely missed it. Due to the low res of the image, the shadow the figure stood in blended perfectly into the surrounding scenery. You could easily miss it if you weren't paying close attention. Obviously, the image was fake, but what if the person who'd taken the photo had accidentally left themselves in it? If they had, it was possible that they'd forgotten to edit themselves out when they'd tampered with the image. It looked like they were wearing a Suemei uniform. In that case, it had to be the demon girl. She had been wearing one at the time of the crime, after all. But when I took a closer look... I noticed that the figure's hair was actually pretty short. The demon girl had long hair, like Yua. I can't even see. How can you even tell? I can't even see. I can barely even tell that that's like a person. That's why it's like it's like so obscure. I couldn't even hardly see it to begin with. All right, then. Time for some computer magic. I needed the details here. I opened up some image processing software and dragged the image in. Then, with a big gulp, I selected the Levels option in the Adjustments menu, and brightened the once darkened corners of the image. Oh, shoot! Oh, it's Takumi! What? What? The heck? <laughs> Uh, huh? What? I don't... That's... Pictured on the screen... Pictured on the screen... Was unmistakably... Me. How was it me? It didn't make any sense. I'd never even been there before September 29th. It was fake. It had to be fake. I couldn't find any bit of proof that it was, but it absolutely had to be. Nothing made sense otherwise. I mean, Shogun had sent the image on the 28th, and the crucifixion murder case had occurred on the 29th. If the image was what had happened on the 29th, then that would mean it was a picture taken from the future. 
Oh my gosh, there actually are ties into Steins Gate, or I guess Steins Gate had ties into this. It's like all futuristic type dealings with stuff. That's so weird. What is going on? Do you have precognitive powers? Screw you! There's no way I have powers! I kicked the plastic bottle at my feet and closed the paint program. I checked the file's properties to see when it was made. And then, I lost all words. The timestamp was the 28th. But that was the least of my worries now. In the comments section of the properties menu was a single, inconspicuous sentence. A sentence my eyes couldn't look away from. Is it gonna be whose eyes are those eyes? Yup! Oh no! Uh, <laughs> I slammed my hands on the keyboard before shoving it to the edge of my desk. I clutched my head. <laughs> Save me, Santa! I could barely hold back my tears. What the heck had I done to deserve a whole week of nothing but more and more insane bullcrap? Why was I the only one that had to deal with this crap? <laughs> Hang on a second. If they had somehow managed to get a photo of me, and then they'd edited it into the image of the crime scene, that would either mean Shogun had taken a photo of me without my consent, or that he had somehow obtained my photo from another source. And considering how he'd suddenly entered the chat room and started talking to me right after Grimm had left, he had likely been aiming for me and me alone from the very start. Shogun might very well have discovered my real identity. If that was true, then Shogun, the demon girl, anyone could raid my base at any moment, and then I'd be abducted. Dude, it's just like Steins Gate. Oh my gosh, it's the same thing. It's like, oh no, someone's gonna like potentially break in and raid a, to get the, the IBN 5100, right? That was the whole thing. Oh my gosh, it's crazy how they like parallel each other. I felt a chill on the nape of my neck. It was the gaze again. There was something there. Watching me. Don't look at me. Did you really think I'd turn around? I knew the rules of the game better than anyone. The, it'll take more than that to make me turn around game. Fear sent goosebumps all over my body and I felt a strong urge to check that the door was locked. But instead of doing that, I just continued to stare at my monitor, as I was way too stubborn to let myself lose. Unable to calm down, I opened up my default word processor and wrote down everything on my mind. That has to be it. Okay, wait, so demon girl equals cold-blooded murderer has precognitive powers. Interesting he says that she has that. Okay. Shogun, demon girl's underling, Yua, Shogun's underling. Okay. Huh. No, Yua's definitely not part of this. Yua's, Yua's I think she's investigating on her own, for sure. Um, Shogun... I mean, if you was to be trusted, is actually us, which would mean we're the demon girl's underling without knowing it, right? Because she knew our name, right? She called us Taku, so she knows us. So it could be that we're actually the the murderer or like part of the murders, if nothing else. Um, interesting. Okay. All right. As I stared fearfully at the word demon. I began to wonder if the girl at the crime scene 
was actually a real demon. I mean, come on. She couldn't be human by any means. If she was a demon, she might actually be able to see the future. And if she could see the future, projecting a scene from the future onto a picture via psychic photography would be child's play. Huh. It would line up perfectly with how she'd somehow managed to carry out the gruesome crucifixion all on her own. She'd then gotten her underling, Shogun, to send the image to me, a person who she knew would end up accidentally witnessing the crime scene. I didn't know why she'd done that. Maybe it was a threat. This'll be you next if you tell anyone what you saw. Or maybe... It was a death sentence. You're next. And if that really was what it meant, then... I I'm screwed. They could come and murder me at any moment. Oh. Okay. Oh, shoot, are we... Oh, we're with Yua. Okay. Interesting. Uh, all right, we just... Oh, boy. This is getting interesting now. Dude, his paranoia is going to be on, like, high alert. He's just going to be... He's just... He's going to be afraid of everything now. Kusnoki Yua faced the PC in her room. Her profile gravely serious. She swiftly read through the information displayed on the monitor. Before long... Yua let out a small sigh and released her hand from the mouse, glancing at a piece of paper sitting within her reach. Uh, oh, okay, that's a lot, that's a lot. Uh, more, oh, oh, okay, this is all Shogun. Yeah, this is, okay. This is the chat log. It was the very same paper she had put before Nishijo Takumi the day before. The printout of the chat log between Nidhart and Shogun. Nishicho-kun. Yua muttered a single name. The view of Takami sitting alone on that Shoto Park bench appeared in her mind, before she quickly shook her head to drown it out. Suddenly, she looked behind herself in surprise. Just now, it felt like... Someone was watching me. Oh, frick! She feels it too! She's got the whole eyes thing too! What does it mean? Dude. Um. Okay, another theory I'm just thinking of. Yeah, no, that doesn't really make sense because... See, okay, the delusion that we saw with Yua on the street where we thought she mouthed, uh, mouthed the words... Uh, 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 whose eyes are those eyes? That could have maybe been, a, a, a like, a, another dimension you are or something, is what I was thinking. But I was like, I was thinking, what if each character is watching themselves or something for some reason? So really, Takumi's actually watching himself, you is watching herself, but I don't know, because the, the, what I'm gonna call the other dimension you are, if that really was a real thing and not just some fake delusion was watching Takami, right? So that wouldn't make sense. So unless there's another entity in this other dimension that is masking itself and, 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 and pretending to be like other people, which doesn't really make sense, then I don't know. Her gaze stopped upon a large stuffed ghetto froggy enshrined on her bed. Wondering if it had just been her imagination... She tilted her head in puzzlement. Then, she slowly rose to her feet, walked over to her bed, and fell onto it head first. <laughs> the sheets smelled of the sun. Can you smell the sun? Is that a thing? <laughs> it seemed that her mother had kindly dried the futon earlier today. Yua buried her face in that relieving scent her gaze wandering about vacantly. Her room was very neat and orderly, 
placing her meticulous personality on full display. This especially applied to her large bookshelf, which was rather incongruous for a room sized at around 13 square meters. It was packed tightly with countless books, leaving hardly any gaps. However, charmingly, the lower half consisted of nothing but complex academic books, computing-related books, and other similar material, contrasting greatly with the upper half, which was filled with shoujo manga and anime DVDs. Okay, so she is still a little weeb. Okay. All right. And she did tell us, she did say that she's like, it wasn't all fake, I promise, or whatever. So, but she is, she's, she's trying to figure out someone, I bet someone close to her died, like her sister or something, her little brother. Someone died close to her, that's why she's so into these murders, probably, right? I have a feeling. Or she also could be someone that's like Takumi, and that's why she's so, so, she's realizing that she has precognitive powers to some degree, maybe, and is like, I bet Takumi also does by the way that he's been, you know, doing stuff based off of her investigation, right? Hmm. If nothing else, she doesn't seem to be part of some organization of any kind. She seems to be just a normal kid. I think. <laughs> With another sigh, Yua turned her body face up and stared at the ceiling. D.I.D. Disassociative Identity Disorder. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Uh, wow, okay, yeah, that's a lot. She muttered the name of the mental illness she had just been researching. Dude, this is like, this was before this was like a big thing, right? Dude, freaking chaos had freaking predicted what the future was going to look like. Now it's like freaking, that's it, it, like a, it's like, it, it's a, what do you want to say? It's like popular to have mental illnesses of this kind. People would never say that. They'd say, you don't understand my my mental illness. I have DID. But it's I, like, just like all these kids, like out of nowhere, you know, just suddenly have gotten DID for like no reason, you know? It's just like all, all of a sudden, all these different like kids, you'll see videos and they talk about how they have like seven different people inside of them, but they're all aware of each other, uh, which I think people say like, if DID actually is a real disorder that actually truly exists, that uh, that uh, it, it would like even in it, even even in it being a rare thing, you wouldn't know of the other people that are inside of your mind. Right. You wouldn't you would be unaware of them in most cases. Like it'd be very, very, very hyper rare to be aware of them and to just have them like come in and out like that. So it's like it's just kind of interesting that this is talking about that. And then now. In the day and age we live in, like, that's become, like, a thing that's happened. Maybe not for this reason, but you know what I mean. It's just, it's crazy how, it's like, both this and Steins Gate have, like, said stuff that I'm like, holy crap, that's, like, actually kind of happening right now. That's kind of freaky. Uh, especially in, like, Steins Gate Zero, too. Like, that was, like, there was a lot of stuff in there that I was like, oh, my gosh. It's like, they're, they're actually, like, predicting the future. It's kind of crazy. Oh, my gosh. An explanation related to it was still displayed on her monitor. It must be so hard. Yua hugged the stuffed ghetto froggy by her pillow tightly as she thought about Takami. But... I... However, her expression soon vanished replaced only by the gritting of her teeth. Uh, okay, what did that mean? She said she was thinking of Takumi, what does it mean? Is my dream still alive? Is it alive? No way. <laughs> it hurt to breathe. All I was doing was looking things up on my PC, yet it hurt to breathe. I could feel my heart pounding harder than it ever had before. And of course, the feeling that something was watching me would not go away. I was still just barely keeping myself from turning around, but I knew I couldn't do it for much longer. 
What the frick is wrong with you? Show yourself, jerk! I cried out angrily at whatever it was. Surely it wasn't the demon girl, right? Oh, frick. What if it was? She could be using second sight, or clairvoyance, or, or, or some other demonic power to spy on me. <laughs> the chills on the back of my neck were gradually growing stronger, to the point where they were getting slightly painful, the jolts of electricity coursing through my body. I was covered from head to toe in sweat. The front of my t-shirt was completely soaked. Gosh darn it! Unable to take it anymore, I whipped around in my chair as forcefully as I could. And yet, all I saw was my room. In the same condition as always. I didn't see a single thing that shouldn't have been there. How are you not there? Who are you? With a yell that was closer to a shriek than anything, I burst up from my chair and went to make sure the door was locked. And much to my relief, it was. I wiped away the sweat on my forehead with my sleeve. Oh my gosh, he's freaking. He's tweaking now. Returning to my PC, I focused on the monitor once more. It was still displaying what I had been researching earlier. Precognition. Holy crap, okay. When I was a kid, I'd truly believed that precognition existed. That psychics existed. And if I was being completely honest, I still did to a degree. That was why my first thought had been that the image from Shogun and the Demon Girl was a precognitive photograph. A thought which only drove me to look into it all the more. What if... Maybe, just maybe, there were tons of psychics all over the world, and I just didn't know? Back when I was a kid, when that bus accident happened... I'd managed something that had been pretty close to precognition. For that reason, I couldn't completely rule out its existence. But no matter how much I searched, all I could find was extremely dubious articles about the occult, voodoo crap, or whatever else. There was absolutely nothing that proved scientifically whether it existed or not. There has to be at least something. <sighs> Growing increasingly frustrated, I violently tapped away at the keyboard. I couldn't deal with how anxious not having a concrete answer made me. Was the world really telling me to give up? To wait here, trembling in fear of demons that might or might not come? I couldn't stay sane like that. Of course, I would have vastly, vastly preferred to learn that precognition didn't exist, but regardless of what the truth was, I needed to know it. Badly. Pretty much out of options, I decided to take a look at At Channel's occult board. The place was typically home to nothing but total BS noise, lies and misinformation mainly but it actually had some pretty mind-blowing and even useful information scattered on it sometimes. Okay. Biting back how frantic I was, I opened up at channel. Then, I clicked on the occult board and gave precognition a search. And when I did... Uh, okay, predict, uh, number of dudes, uh, uh, okay, um, okay, 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 nothing really here that I can make any sense of, currently. Uh, I'll let Takami make sense of it. 
Huh? My search pulled up a surprising number of threads, about 30 of them. Was precognition a hot topic on at channel at the moment? With a gulp, I checked the thread titles one by one. Interesting. So, this is taking me back to the Messiah. Oh, dude, wait. That was from Steins Gate 2. I was just going to say, this is taking me back to Steins Gate 0 when, uh, when everybody had, uh, when, when, it, when, when we came to the conclusion that everybody had uh, reading Steiner, right? To some degree, you know, a little bit or whatever. It's making me wonder if, like, a lot of other people are having precognitive uh, powers to some degree, but some stronger than others or something. And that's why you're getting a bunch of threads on it. Just like we had a bunch of threads on uh, time travel and stuff like that. Well, that was a little different, but you know what I mean. I'm just, I'm wondering. I'm, I'm seeing, there's a lot of, like, crossover here. Phantasm? Fess? Oh, yeah, Fess! Right, Fess, okay. Okay, so Fess is also someone who uses at channel, then it's got to be, right? Uh, if that's the same person and not like an acronym for something else that that the person I'm calling Fess actually is taking on, like a moniker or something. Okay. Most of the threads contained those two key words. In addition, new gen discussion had also wormed its way in with lots of unsettling terms like prophetic lyrics and murderer being used. Having never heard of Phantasm before, I went to Google them. Apparently, they were a Shibuya-based four-piece gothic punk band that had been doing live concerts recently. They were so popular, in fact, that they were completely dominating the indie music scene with a female vocalist known only as Fess. Oh! Anyway, to check whether it was related to precognition or not, I clicked on the thread at the top titled Precognition and Prophecies, Phantasm General, New Gen 43, and gave the contents a brief skim. Okay. Uh, okay. Anonymous Prophet, calm yourself, everyone. But, yeah, let's all go to the concert Sunday. Those who duel join Fess Sama's Black Mass without letting any of it go to waste. Miss out, and you'll be getting the crucifixion treatment. Uh, okay. I read the lyrics, but it still feels like a stretch. The phrasing is vague as crap. There's no way any are actual prophecies. Uh, if I'm wrong, though, have mercy on me, crucifixion killer lol. Calling it precognition or a prophecy or whatever is taking it way too far. Lamau. Uh, this ain't Nostradamus, so how about we just sit back and enjoy the music for what it is? Okay. Fess's stuff ain't bad lyrically. But I def can feel the new gen connection, to be honest. Uh, everyone always talks about Fess. Rip the composer deal. Poor guys uh, getting no credit. Festan. Huh, huh. Festan's lyrics forced me to find the meaning of life. It's a trap. Festards are total idiots. Lamau. Okay. Well, to be honest, I want to be insulted by Fess Sama in that chill voice of hers while she's grinding her boots into my rear <laughs> over and over until it feels like my eyes are going to fall out of their sockets. It would feel so intoxicating to stop on the edge right at the last moment and so erotic as I wonder if she'll spit on my face or not. Ew, dude, gross, bro. No matter what you think, I, w I want Fess to just take a knife and cut open my throat, ending my life. I want to breathe my last breath as she says to me, you're an eyesore. Festan is my waifu. What the frick, bro? Okay. 
Uh, I've been trying to kind of notice the timestamps too, is just in case those matter. I don't think they do though. I'm seeing because like you know they have the 2000 like crossed out. They won't actually say what it is. But uh, perhaps we should take note of the fact that it's October 7th. Okay. Uh, okay. Take that to the BDSM thread. Also, Fess is my waifu, actually. <laughs> Stop bumping this crap. Uh, this what you guys mean by new gen prophecy stuff? Okay. O oh, servant revealed by the light of the moonlit night. Connect the phantasmal paths which lead to this place. Little do they know, their screams will soon turn to silence, and repose shall fall upon us as we link hand in hand within the wind. Yeah, that's what Fess said, right? When we uh, got a glimpse of her for a sec. By the way, I say screw phantasm. Like La Mau, their fans are terrifying. You'd think they were all brainwashed. Lol, now you're gonna get it. Don't leak the lyrics, idiot. What a brainless troll. Those lyrics. Depending on how you interpreted them, they could be seen as referring to the group Dive. And yet, those lyrics had been released two months ago, which meant they hadn't been written after the crucifixion. Okay. Is this... Precognition? Could it just be a coincidence? Or could Phantasm be yet another one of the demon girl's underlings? I read the thread in more detail, only to find out that each of the three new gen incidents had all been prophesied by Phantasm's lyrics. Oh. However, the lyrics for the songs that supposedly prophesied the man-child and crucifixion incidents had not been posted on At Channel. Apparently uploading them online was viewed as a taboo of sorts. The philosophy seemed to be, if you really want to know, just go to the concerts and buy an album yourself. Regardless, there were a great number of people online trying to predict the next new-gen case based on the songs Phantasm had performed thus far. And apparently, ever since New Gen kicked off, Phantasm's albums had been completely selling out. They had been so successful, in fact, that even the mainstream media had picked up on it. Gothic band boasting cult following rises among the youth of Shibuya. News stories like that were popping up all over the place. The one writing the lyrics was the head singer, Fess. Nobody knew her real name. What if Fess was actually the demon girl? If she was, it would explain how she'd managed to prophesy the incidents literal months before they had occurred. The demon girl was the culprit, after all. I tried doing an image search, but I couldn't find any good photos of her face. All the pictures were taken by phones during her concerts, and they were so blurry that I couldn't even begin to make out her face. <sighs> Frick! I wiped my sweat-drenched forehead with the hem of my shirt. I was frustrated. I was scared. I couldn't believe anything. I didn't even want to see anything. Several emotions swirled within me, suffocating me. My breathing hadn't even come close to stabilizing this entire time. But even so, I knew one thing for certain. I needed to see Fess's face. With trembling fingers, I typed in Phantasm's name and clicked on their official website. Why wouldn't you go there first? <laughs> oh, gross. The site was mostly black decorated only by text of a uniform, deep crimson color. It was unrelenting in its simplicity, and yet, it felt so incredibly eerie and strange. Yeah, it looks almost like a, uh, it looks like a website from, like, the dark web or, or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of got that. That's good marketing at that point. <laughs> there was barely anything on the site at all. 
just basic information on their concerts and discography. There wasn't even a single image. There were no profiles on the band's members, nor anything on their song lyrics. <sighs> well, if they were the cul culprit, they wouldn't want their face on the internet anyway. Talk about thorough. I took a look at their performance schedule and saw that they typically performed about every other week. Their next concert was the day after tomorrow. If I went to it, I'd be able to check whether Fess was the demon girl or not. But even if I did find out that they were one and the same, what would I even do? Report Fess to the police? Cry and beg for her to leave me alone? Bring a crucifix and attempt a mock exorcism? Yeah, none of those were going to happen. I was up against a demon. There was no way an otaku freak like me could come out on top. Problem is, if I didn't, I'd die. She'd transform my corpse into her newest art piece. And I'd be posted on the All Things New Gen site as yet another case. S screw that! But if I didn't do something, I'd never find out what that picture of me that Shogun had sent really meant. And on the off chance that Fess wasn't connected to the demon girl, maybe I could ask her to help me fight against whoever the demon girl actually was. Like that's ever going to happen. I'd never survive going to a concert. I'd never been to one in my life. That sort of thing was infinitely beyond my comfort zone. Yeah, I hear you, bro. Not to mention concert halls were cramped and dark and noisy and crowded. Just imagining a place like that made me want to hurl. I was at my wit's end. I had no idea what to do. The chills on the back of my neck still hadn't gone away, and the painful, prickling sensation suddenly turned into a burning one. I looked behind me yet again, but like always, nobody was there. Ugh. Just stop. Please. I closed my eyes tightly, focusing on nothing other than waiting for the gaze to disappear. I see, I wonder if it's him in the future, or or maybe the past, I don't know, however the precognition would work, because precognition would be seeing into the future, right? So, it makes me wonder if, like, oh, it couldn't be an earlier version of himself, so I don't know, but it makes me wonder if he's trying to warn himself of something, and then this version of himself is being like, oh, just leave me alone, and wherever else he is in this, like, other dimension or whatever, whatever I'm thinking... You know, or wherever he's using his precognition, he's just like, come on, listen to me. Why did I have to be so stupid? You know, I wonder if that's going to happen. Interesting. I didn't want to go through this torment for the rest of my life. For all I knew, the gays would straight up kill me someday. <laughs> Think, Takumi. What can I do? Think!